I'm Margot Politis. Welcome to Study English, IELTS Preparation. Today we'll practice using hyphens in words and talk about showing contrast using the words despite, although and but. But first we visit Outback Australia and an isolated place called Maree. We'll see how the popularity of four-wheel drive cars has meant that a lot more people are travelling through the outback. And now they're even building luxury accommodation there. 685 kilometres north of Adelaide on the Udna Data track is Maree. When the old Gan Railway closed in the 1980s, it just about vanished off the map. But despite the isolation and the population dwindling to just 80, an out of towner is now making a million dollar investment. Condition of moving demand. Robin Taylor bought the 120 year old pub three years ago and is about to build a two story guest house next door. As well as a huge function room, it will have 14 luxury ensuite apartments and is costing one and a half million dollars. Say it quickly, it's not too bad. <laughs> The driving force behind the boom is four-wheel drives. Sometimes we join two or more words together to function as a single word or concept. We call these compound words. An example is father-in-law. Compound words can function as nouns, like father-in-law, or they can be adjectives. Here's a clip about the isolated town Marie. See if you can spot the compound words. But despite the isolation and the population dwindling to just 80, an out-of-towner is now making a million dollar investment. She says out-of-towner and million dollar investment. Here, out-of-towner functions as a noun, a person who is from out-of-town. When writing compound words, we use hyphens. In the phrase million dollar investment, the compound million dollar functions as an adjective. It means that the investment will cost a million dollars. When you write a million dollars, the word dollars is a noun. The S is needed to show a plural number. In English, adjectives don't show number so the S drops from dollar. We just say million dollar investment, not million dollars investment. When the phrase a million dollars becomes an adjective, it needs to have a hyphen added. A million dollars, a million dollar investment. Million dollar with a hyphen is a compound word. Let's listen for another example. Robin Taylor bought the 120 year old pub three years ago and is about to build a two story guest house next door. She talks about the 120 year old pub. The pub is 120 years old. Notice that the phrase doesn't use hyphens and years has an S. But when we turn it into a phrase, it becomes a 120 year old pub with hyphens and with the S gone. She also refers to a two story guest house. The guest house has two stories. It's a two story guest house. Let's listen to a description of the guest house. As well as a huge function room, it will have 14 luxury ensuite apartments and is costing one and a half million dollars. She says the guest house will have 14 luxury ensuite apartments and is costing one and a half million dollars. We don't use any hyphens with these groups of words because they don't make up a compound concept. Apartments is the noun and 14, luxury and ensuite are the qualifiers. This is a noun phrase. We could rewrite this information to use hyphens. We could form a single concept from one and a half million dollars. 
the guest house will have 14 luxury one and a half million dollar ensuite apartments. Then the physical description would be a single concept. We would join one and a half million dollar with hyphens. It's important to remember that compound adjectives, like all adjectives, cannot have a plural form. This is important when describing complex data, like in task one of the IELTS writing test. The town in today's story is called Marie. Marie is a very isolated town, but something unexpected is happening there. Although the town is very small and far from the city, someone is prepared to invest a lot of money there. But despite the isolation and the population dwindling to just 80, an out-of-towner is now making a million dollar investment. Despite the isolation and the population dwindling to 80, an out-of-towner is making a million dollar investment. She uses the preposition despite. She could also have used the word although. Despite and although have the same meaning. They show contrast with unexpected results. Let's try an exercise. Here are two sentences. Margaret's marks were low. She managed to get into law school. How would you join these sentences together using but, despite, or although? Let's start with but. Margaret's marks were low, but she managed to get into law school. Now let's use although. Although Margaret's marks were low, she managed to get into law school. We can also join the sentences using despite. Despite having low marks, Margaret managed to get into law school. Despite can be followed by a noun. We can say despite the isolation or despite the fact I had a cold. Or it can be followed by a verb. When it's followed by a verb, we use the participle form. For example, despite being isolated or despite having a cold. Let's finish with one final exercise. Take a look at these two sentences. There was noise outside all night. I managed to sleep. How would you join them using the word but? There was noise outside all night, but I managed to sleep. Now look at the two sentences again. How would you join them using although? Although there was noise outside all night, I managed to sleep. And finally, how would you join these two sentences using despite? Despite the noise outside all night, I managed to sleep. Using the words despite and although effectively will help improve your spoken and written English. And that's all for Study English today. Let's have a look back at the things we've talked about. First, we looked at using hyphens to create compound words. Then we looked at using but, although and despite to join sentences. And despite the fact that Study English has finished for today, you can continue to practice your English skills. Just visit our website for more information and IELTS tips. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.